Okay guys, so we're gonna take a look at stoichiometry. Um, so I've got a typical stoichiometry problem I saved here, right here for you. You should have already done some of these as part of your summer work. Um, people said, hey, do I have to be very good at stoichiometry to do AP Chem? And the answer is yes, you have to be pretty good at this. This, this is something we do a lot all year. We'll keep coming back to it. Um, and it's really stoichiometry is based on um, uh, conservation of mass law. So what you do is you take this idea that these atoms are rearranging, that'll give us some ratio between the different reactants, the amount of products, and how many different products we get, and then we can solve all kinds of stuff. So this reaction right here, so if you want to pause and try to do it on your own, then listen to my explanation, that's fine. Or if you're a little shaky on this, maybe you want this to do use as an explanation to work a little more on getting that homework done before Monday. All right. So thermite is a chemical reaction where aluminum reacts with iron two oxide to produce molten iron and aluminum oxide. They used to use this thermite stuff like if you were a long ways away and they were repairing rails and stuff, you could actually take the thermite, it's got a fuse on it, you light this little pile of thermite and it gets so hot, the iron that's produced is molten and then you could kind of weld together pieces of broken rail like say you're up in Alaska or Canada someplace where you couldn't really haul the welding equipment out there. So it's something that has some practical application. We've had it for a long time. So anyway, how many grams of aluminum are needed to completely react with 10 grams of iron two oxide? So the one thing is when you get a balanced chemical equation, you can ask about a relationship between any two things in that balanced equation. It can be reactant and product. You have product asked about how much reactant is necessary to get the product. Or if you've got a certain amount of one product, how much of that product, um, how much of the other product do you need? All right, so let's move this up a little bit. I think it'll go up. Yes, three, it does. Your first step on any stoichiometry problem is you have to have a proper balanced chemical equation. So I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to talk about balancing chemical equations in order to do the stoichiometry. So let's take a look at something right here. Uh, if you struggle with this at all, a good thing to do is underline all of your chemicals that are in there to make sure you get this because there's a lot of word clutter in stoichiometry problems so those are a bunch of things where it can be kind of hard to parse out the information that you actually need so I'm I don't know what color we're on but anyway thermites are coming action where aluminum reacts with iron to oxide and it produces iron and aluminum oxide I think that's got all my stuff in terms of things that are in the chemical reaction. So now I gotta do my balanced equation. So aluminum reacts with, that's telling me those are my reactants. So aluminum reacts with iron two oxide. And it produces iron and aluminum oxide. So this is a single replacement reaction. The metal aluminum is more active than iron, so it kicks it out. Now, I didn't put in, uh, let's move this a little bit. Okay, I didn't put in all of uh, my subscripts yet, so I just was gonna save that till after, my, after the fact here a little bit. So now I've got my chemicals there roughly, and I gotta get the subscripts right in order to, for this to work. You must get the proper subscripts on every single chemical in there first before you start trying to balance the equation. Um, I've got some individual elements. So I've got some aluminum and some iron on its own. One of the questions you have to ask yourself, is this one of the seven diatomic elements? That's the heavenly seven. If you want to remind me in class, I can tell you, okay, what are the seven elements? Well, they're hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Those are your elements. Okay, it makes a nice little seven on the periodic table, starting with element seven. Then you got to throw in hydrogen there. So that's why I call it the heavenly, standing for hydrogen seven. Okay, so let's take a look. Aluminum and iron are not part of that group, so they can stand alone by themselves. All right, compounds. These are ionic compounds, metal and nonmetal. So let's take a look at the charges. Oxygen's negative two. Iron is a plus two, according to this, because it's iron two oxide, so that the charges cancel out. We're fine right there. All right, over here on this side. Well, oxygen's still always minus two. Aluminum's a plus three. 
So that causes a problem. If that's a minus two, that's a plus three. If you know how to do the crisscross thing, you can do that. Otherwise, you go, okay, what's the lowest common denominator between two and three? Well, it's six. That's the only thing that they both uh, divide into evenly. So I'm gonna get, need to have a plus six charge and a minus uh, six charge for this to work. So to get that, I need three oxygens. So that would be negative six. And I need two aluminums because each aluminum has a plus three charge. Now I've got the right subscripts, I think. Two times positive three is plus six charge due to aluminum ions. Negative two times three, that's a negative six for the action ions. I think we're all good. Now we're set to balance the equation. Once you've got the subscripts set up on this thing, you can't touch them. That's it. Okay, get the subscripts. That's the formula for the chemical. We can't play around with it. Um, one of the things we don't talk about that much is when you're putting in the coefficients, what are you really doing? When you put in the coefficients, um, you are showing that this reaction is balanced due to mass. So if this rearranges, the number of atoms on this side has got to balance out with the total number of atoms over there. Otherwise, we just don't have a balanced equation. Well, we see there's two aluminums in the aluminum oxide, but I only had one aluminum atom to start with. So how do I fix that? Subscript two. Now remember, not, or not subscript two, coefficient two. Remember, once we get our subscript set, we can't touch them. Okay, um, any other problems here? Whoops, I got three oxygens over there. I've only got one on this side, so that means I'm gonna need three iron oxides. Oh boy, that just threw off my iron. No problem, I just gotta put a three in front of here. Now if we were to sketch this all out, we'd see the total number of atoms I have on this side matches the total number of atoms there. So we're gonna obey the conservation of mass law. We're also gonna obey atom atomic theory. Now I can actually start solving the problem. I wanna show you a little trick here that's good scaffolding for what we're gonna do all year. Cause we're gonna start getting all kinds of ways these numbers are gonna come at you. You're gonna talk about how many milliliters of a certain molar solution you have. You're gonna talk about what kind of volume of gas you have at a certain temperature and pressure. So there's all kinds of different ways that we're gonna be giving you information about these chemicals. So one of the things you can do All right, so we're gonna call this Bill's Box. It's another teaching uh, uh, friend of mine who came up with this to try to help students who are struggling with stoichiometry a little bit. So what will you do? You put a box around this entire equation, and then we're gonna build some walls between our different chemicals. Okay, then we have a dotted line area, and this we're going to call the mole layer, okay? So when we're in moles, moles can go anywhere they want to, down here in the mole layer. If you're up here in this area, these are concrete barriers and you can't go from one to the other. How does this help us out? Well, if we've got something where the units are up here in this layer, I know I'm gonna have to dig down into the mole layer before I can go anywhere and start using my equation. Cheesy, I know, but it works. So let's put in the information we have, all right. How many grams of aluminum are needed to completely react with 10 grams of iron oxide? So my question mark, I want to put right in there. That's grams of aluminum. And the units are really important. These units aren't going to be grams all year. They're going to be all kinds of stuff. All right, so that's what I'm looking for. And then they always give you some information to find this out. So it's 10 grams of iron oxide. Okay, so if it's 10 grams of iron oxide, I can just use my ratio, it's three to two, so I'm gonna have less aluminum. No, that's not how this works. What do we have to do? Okay, so I'm right here, I can't head over to the aluminum and say how much aluminum I have. I've gotta get down into the mole layer. Then I can start using my ratio. So the first thing that I need to do is, I'm gonna take this 10 grams, and I'm gonna to have to convert that over to, um, uh, into how many moles of iron oxide I actually have. Now let me see if I can move this thing up. I don't know if I can. It's gonna let me do that. Okay, it's not gonna let me do that. So let's just go ahead and maybe we can do it down here. Hopefully we have enough space. 10.0 grams 
looks like that's going to show up, of iron oxide is going to be equal to how many moles of iron oxide? Okay. Well, um, I need to know the molar mass of iron oxide. So I use my handy dandy periodic table. I'm going to figure out what this is. Stoichiometry problems take a while, so just going to have to live with that, guys. All right. So So what I got for the molar mass of iron 2 oxide is 71.845 grams per mole. So 71.85 grams, okay, a little rough there, per one mole. Okay, so if I take 10 grams, I get 0.1392 moles. Is that about right? I'm hoping that that's right. Okay, I'm going to double check that. 10 divided by 71 point. Uh, yep. So 0.139. Okay, so now I've dug down into my mole layer. I'm down here, I can do some stuff. So it's 0.1392. That's the beauty of the calculator, you can keep more numbers of this. Moles of iron oxide. So that's how many moles of aluminum I'm gonna need, right? Mm, no, you gotta take a look at my coefficient. My ratio is three to two, so what I'm gonna have to do with this number is, I'm going to have to take and multiply this by the ratio of iron oxides to aluminums. You need to do this step. On the AP exam, they've got to see that you multiplied by the proper ratio between the thing that was given and the thing that was asked for on this. All right, so let's see if I can make some space. Hey, I wonder if the mole will let me. Oh, look at there. Okay, so I'm going to make some space down here at the mole here. I'm gonna get over here, because remember, I can go wherever I want now. I, I've got moles of this, I can compare as long as I got my ratio for anything else. Every three mole of iron oxide requires two mole of aluminum. You gotta have that step. So what would I get at that step? So I'm basically taking the moles here, I'm gonna multiply it by two thirds. And that number becomes 0 0.09279. So that's how many moles of aluminum I'd need. Well, if I was done, because if they ask for moles, you could be stopping right there. They don't. We usually want to know grams of this stuff, so what's my last step? Well, I know how many moles of aluminum oxide. I'll need to totally use this up. I've got to convert that to grams. All right, so um, what do I do? I've got to use my handy dandy periodic table. I need another step right here. So what's the molar mass of aluminum? I'm using this one. Your numbers can be a little different if you're using a, a periodic table. They use this one because it's rounded off for the AP, uh, for the AP test into stuff that's a little bit easier to use. It's not the most precise periodic table that you could work with though. All right, so 26.98 is what they have. So basically, if I got the moles of something and I multiply by the molar mass, I'm gonna get back up into here. So I get 2.50 grams okay so that's where I ended up right there 
So if I want to use up 10 grams of iron oxide, I'm going to need to have exactly 2.50 grams. Now this had three sig figs, so that's got three sig, sig figs as well. You do need to be kind of conscious of that. You don't have to get overwrought about it. Now this is a longer video, but also stoichiometry is a lot, lot larger subject. So I'm going to use this same question tomorrow. You can have notes on it. And if you've already calculated the number of moles of some of this stuff, uh, tomorrow's little quiz will go a lot faster. So, you know, make sure you've got this stuff written down. Um, those are little hints, and we'll do some more with this. I'm going to skip over empirical and molecular formula a little bit um, because we're going to do a hydrate lab, I hope, next week, and that's a good place to address that. And I really want to get to some stoichiometry, especially limiting reactants, because that's a place where students struggle a little bit more. Okay, so hopefully we'll see you all tomorrow.